Welcome back to Nick Lenz's Comic Corner Classics slash Non Classics, episode number 937, double shot 831. Two Batman related trades. First up, it is Catwoman Volume 1 Copycats. Collecting the first, I believe it's the first six issues, right? I have, I'm trying to look this up here because apparently the back doesn't. Oh, yeah. Yeah, first six issues of this. And. I should point out though the cover, even the even the spine does, which which I think is a little weird. The fact it doesn't have the numbering for it. Yeah, despite the fact this is the first volume of this series, it's not listed on the spine. Nope, it's not listed on the spine. It's listed on the back for some reason. I have no idea why. Also, you can tell by the cover. Yeah, it has Catwoman holding the cover, holding the comic that basically. Drew people to send death threats to Tom King. Batman 50. I should point out, though, this book was announced just prior to the book coming out. And this was the first Catwoman ongoing series in two years when it came out last year. Yeah, for some strange reason. And as far as I know, there is never an... Ex I, it, I, when I get a chance to talk to Frank Terry, I'm going to ask, like, why did DC end the book for? And bring it back to just been gone for two years. And what she be doing for two years? Well, she been supporting character pages of Batman. Of course, also appearing occasionally in other books, but mainly pages of Batman. Also, the I should point out the writer and artist here is, is, is a woman named Julie Jones, and the inking here is done by Laura Aldred. Yes. A creative team comprised of women. Yep. Also, because, well, New Catwoman comic. Let's do something unprecedented. Let's give Catwoman a brand spanking new costume. And this is what it looks like. Yes, it from the look of it, it looks like it's partially inspired by the Michelle Pfeiffer costume. The Michelle, costume that Michelle Pfeiffer wore in Batman Returns. Also in here, Catwoman has got sort of a supporting cast. Also, she's got scars on her body, which I think is a little weird because last time she was seen, just prior to this, she didn't have any scars. Oh, and the whole thing with the copycast thing. Yeah, it's not exactly resolved here with this particular set of issues. There's apparently people dressing up as Catwoman and framing her for crimes she did not actually commit. One of whom happened to be wearing the Darwin Cook costume. I have no idea why. Just that, well, she does. Also, her two su two supporting characters in here, as far as I can tell, she apparently they're friends with her. They just randomly showed up like, oh, these are her supporting cast. Okay. I love the fact they actually kept her logo from her previous line, which I thought that was really cool. Yeah, believe it or not, this was the logo for the previous Catwoman series from... When it ended a couple, when it ended just a few years ago, yeah, I was actually quite surprised to see that they actually kept the logo. Yeah, I did, I thought they would just update it like they do a lot of char a lot of character books, but no, they actually kept it. Also, there's this bizarre storyline involving a senator, senator's wife, where apparently she can take off most of her own skin. Well. Where she apparently suffered some kind of disfigurement. Also, one thing that was really nice touch for Julie Jones to do in here was that a reference something happened in the Brubaker run for for Catwoman, where Black Mask, yes, Black Mask, a guy who actually worked worked with Catwoman when she was the crime boss, where he basically sort of tortured and basically. Institutional basically caused her sister Maggie to be institutionalized. I love the fact they brought her in here, and I'm glad the fact they actually changed it where she's not freaking blind and she's not a nun. I'm not sure why in the world they made Selena Kyle's sister a nun. Yeah, I'm not sure why, but yeah, also I should point out one point Selena Kyle's sister was one point married. Now, I'm thinking though, a cat on my title, okay, you can get a fresh star word, okay. I keep wondering though, where in the world is Harley Robinson? Her best friend, one of her closest friends. Yes, for some strange reason, she's nowhere in this book at all. 
Also, this book doesn't bring in the fact that, well, during the second to last writer's run for Catwoman, it outed Catwoman as bisexual, which I think a lot of people basically kind of knew. And is it brought up in here at all? No, apparently it's forgotten for some reason. It's particularly very weird. But it's a good start for this particular story. And it does not necessarily get wrapped up in a way, but it, she does get liberated from her crimes. But she doesn't take down the person. Also, the greedy senator's wife apparently doesn't care for her husband, so she murders him while they're in bed together. Actually, it's not a senator. She's a governor's wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and apparently her sons just don't have a problem seeing her without her nose. Yeah. I'm not really sure how in the world she got this way, because the book doesn't bother to explain it. Nope. Yeah, when, when you finish reading it, you're like, okay, you're left with a bunch of questions, basically, if you finish reading it, but it's an okay story. It's a good start for this series, because book a 9 out of 10. I love the artwork in here. Julie Jones does a fantastic job of drawing Catwoman here. Next up, something a lot more interesting. We have... Dark Knight's Metal, Dark Knight's Rising. This collects all the remaining one-shots of Dark Knight's Metal. For, basically, these are the one-shots. You have, for Dark Knight's Metal, you have Red Death. Basically, it's the origin story for all the Batman. Yeah, every single one. Now, the writers in here are actually quite interesting. The Red Death is actually done by the creative team of Flash, Josh Williamson, and, and Carmine Gamacoli. Yeah, they're the one who does Red Death. Yeah, in the case of some of the other ones. Now, Tinnieth himself, James Tinnieth, does write a couple of the one-shots, co-writes a couple of them. Mm -hmm. With this one, this is set on Earth... What is this one? This is Earth negative... Yeah, because... The, uh, negative 52. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it explains how this Batman became his world's Flash. Yeah, apparently he decided to, why he really wanted the Speed Force, so he kind of merged himself with Barry Allen, and that's how he kind of became what he was. Mm -hmm. Then came the one with Cyborg. Yep, called Murder Machine. Yeah. This one is done by Frank Terry and James the Fourth. This one involves Cyborg taking on a version of himself where Bruce Wayne basically merged with Cyborg. And apparently there's an AI Alfred because apparently in his world, Alfred got killed by Bane. Yes, Alfred got killed by Bane by breaking his back. And it's never explained of how they then went in detail about the story. Yeah, also at the end of the story, they... That he apparently the murder machine takes over the watchtower. I can explain why this is up recently. As a matter of fact, it's not even mentioned. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting little story. Plus, I even like the fact that that cyborg is on call with his father. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's also mentioned this AI Alfred apparently massacred the entire Arkham Institute. Yep, but it, it's a very good story. Mm -hmm. Next up, of course, is the the Dawnbreaker. This one is done by Sam Humphreys. Yep, Sam Humphreys. This is from Earth 32. Yep. Yeah, where believe it or not, this this Batman, aka Green Lantern, he becomes a freaking murderer. Yes, he kills people. Yep. He does for some strange reason. Yeah, this is done by Sam Humphreys, Ethan Van Skyver. Yeah, apparently... Now, this is... I should point out, this is not the first Ultimate Batman story to feature where Batman comes Green Lantern. This is actually the second one. The last time was actually Emerald Knight. Where, in that continuity, Bruce Wayne did become Green Lantern. Catwoman became, became a Star of Sapphire, and I think it was Two-Face became a Yellow Lantern. In this world... This guy is a freaking murderer. He he basically kills a lot of criminals. He even kills Commissioner Gordon, and because because he killed Commissioner Gordon, we have the Grand Corps show up, and he be, basically become parallaxed by massacring the Captain Grand Corps, even the Ga Guardians. Yep. Next we have the Drowning, 
where it features a female Batman. Yep. Where in this world, I should point out, this is actually written by Dan Abnett. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. Yeah, this is written by Dan Abnett with artwork by Philip Tan and Tyler Kirkham. Yeah, in this world, well, in her world anyways, she murdered her world's mirror to basically get her powers. Yep. And this is, this is basically a female Bruce Wayne. That's simply what this character is. And not much is delved into her, basically. Just things like how she got her powers and kind of what she... Yeah, it's not much delved into her at all. That's particularly one thing that was a little weird. Next we have The Merciless, where this is read by Piri de Tomasi. Yeah, this story, believe it or not, is a ripoff of God of War. I'm, my reading is like, I'm like, seriously, Batman is freaking Kratos, and he goes after Ares and kills him, takes his power. Yeah, and of course, the also reference that Superman killed the Joker in his reality. Yeah, which makes it basically, we're taking off something from Injustice Gods Among Us. Though I gotta love the artwork of Fantasy's Manipul, it's really good in here. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think that's like, and of course, this one, believe it or not, doesn't. it starts off there, but has this really cool scene of various heads of different government organizations. We have General Sam Lane from the military. We have Steve Trevor, who's the head of Argus. Amanda Waller from Suicide Squad. We have Mr. Bones. At this point, this was his only appearance outside of Supergirl. I think this was before he left. Before Steve Lane left. We also have Father Time from Shade. Hmm? And, yeah, I'm not sure who this woman with the eye patch is supposed to be. I think the woman with the hair. I think that's supposed to be Eda Candy. Yep. And it's from a general lane that, yeah, at, like, our world hero is missing. So let's send the military, let's send, like, bomb whatever. Yeah, that's why Sam Lane is written in here. But then, like, the meeting's interrupted by the Merciless. Yep, he just basically barge into the meeting room. Yeah, and the reason why he's there, just stop the project they're working on. Yep. But it's a really cool one shot. And it's set Earth negative 12. It's by far one of the most, well, it's probably the best one shot of all these. Yeah, that's just my opinion, anyways, because, well, Peter Tomasi. Mm -hmm. It's just really good. This thing could be, be a bit dark, but it's really good. I appreciate what Tomasi did with the character. Despite the fact, yes, it is a partial ripoff of God of War. But, yeah. Next we have the Devastator. Yeah, this world where, apparently, this is particularly something really weird. See, the story is written by Frank Terry and James Henson IV, with Tony Stanton doing the artwork. Yeah, it just seemed like, though, Frank Terry took the idea of Superman Doomed and have it have it to Batman instead. Where he, he gets infected with Doomsday Virus and becomes freaking Doomsday. Yeah, it's like he took that story and put it here. And this is set on, well, the story sets off in Earth Zero, where he has Lobo, his awesome two-page spread, Tony Estiano does, taking on the Devastator. At the Fortress of Solitude, nonetheless. Yep. This happened on Earth Negative One. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is a really good story. Trank Terry does a fantastic job with this book. Mm -hmm. Of course, at one point, Lois expected a virus. Yeah. Now, the last one, The Batman Who Laps. This is probably for a lot of people when this book came out. This is a lot of people's most anticipated book. Because a lot of people were curious about the Batman Who Last backstory. He's from Earth, Nick of 22. The book is written by James Tain IV. And I'll work by Riley Racimo. And in, his, in this world, Batman sort of becomes the Joker in here. He gets infected with Joker gas. Goes nuts. Kills the Bat family. Yeah. He massacres them. And puts on the suit that he basically wears. Yeah, he puts on this. I'm not sure he got the stuff. It's never explained where he got it. And he apparently transformed Damien into one of the one of the Robin zombies. And yeah, I appreciate that this this one to actually explains Batman Hill's backstory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's the darkest of all the one shots. Mm -hmm. But apparently he massacred his own world. And there's this person bandaged up this whole story. And they don't say who it is in here. No. They don't say. 
yeah. The last one is Wild Knights is a uh, is Dark Knights Rising, which is basically a uh, a backstory for Detective Chimp, like how he got his hat. It's basically kind of a retelling of his classic origin story. This is done by four writers. Yeah, Scott Snyder, Grant Morrison, James Tan the Fourth, and Josh Williams with work by Howard Porter, Jorge Menes, Doug Mankey, and Jimmy Benita. Yep. And it's really good. Though it does kill off one of the Batman. I think kills off the murder machine. Yeah, I believe that they kill off one of the Batman. I think I believe it's the murder machine. Yep. Excuse me, the murder machine dies. And of course stuff with the Super Apes was continued in the page of Dark Knight's Metal. These one shots are really, really good. I highly recommend it as now, basically, all these one-shots are, they're just additional material to Dark Knight's Middle, and you probably definitely need to get your hands on this thing, yeah. Aside from the main book, I do recommend Gotham Resistance, the, the Dark Knight's Middle Resistance, because that kind of basically explains some stuff that happens in the main book. These, the This book, basically, is a good additional material to it, so I definitely recommend getting this to get sort of a bigger grasp on Dark Knight's Middle, yeah. But this is really good. Give this book a 9.5 out of 10. It's really, really good. I thoroughly enjoyed reading this thing. It was so exciting. That single Dark Knight's Metal, in my honest opinion, heck, even Tivia agrees with me on this. It's just an exciting event to read. Because on how much Scott Snyder is, is apparently a big fan of DC comic history by referencing stuff from the history and making it modern day. Uh, the only writers I can think of DC who did this... It's only like one era I could think of, and that was, I'm thinking it was, I know, I think Jeff Johns occasionally does this, and I believe Grant Morrison does it too, but Snyder is one of those two writers who actually does do that, and he does it really well. Tinny has done it, basically, pretty much picked up the idea. I don't know if, T I don't think Tomasi's done that much, but yeah, fantastic stories. Okay, so that's it for this particular review. Um, I, I would have one more review plan for today, but I don't have time to record it. So, I'll probably have at least three videos due tomorrow. So, like I said in the last video, it'll be, tomorrow will be reviews of the new chapter of my Herogadamia, newest chapter of Seven Daily Essential, maybe the final chapter of the series, and the newest episode of George's Adventures, okay? But do see the next few. Bye.